So, towards the end of last class we were also looking at how to compute the attribute closure right. So, I will give you uh, I think I, I just looked at some examples, but we were in a little hurry to look at the examples. So, I will now let you see the examples once more. So, given some R set of attributes or the scheme and the functional dependencies like this, uh, we can calculate the attribute closure by a given attribute set then you include that in into the x successive sets you know, we will include that first and then since this is um, uh, the left hand sides of some f d then we will start including the right hand sides into the set and now that advisor id has come we will include advisor name and it stops there you can see that uh, since course id is not there you cannot use this uh, F D and then get grade into this. So, roll number in particular is not a key for this uh, scheme, it is kind of obvious now because grade does not, uh, it does not determine grade. A key determines all the attributes, right. So, now if you take roll number course ID, so obviously you since your roll number is there, all these attributes will come into the picture. And since course ID is also there, you can now use this and then so you get this. So, that will become equal to R and we have. Uh, so, this is a uh, one way of getting hold of the keys of a relation is actually to focus on those attribute sets whose closure is the same R. given that you know the functional dependency ok. So, let us now in this lecture I actually want to talk to you about normal forms <coughs> ok. So, to at the beginning of this module I told you that normal forms are basically certain kind of constraints and in order to you know express these constraints we need some theoretical tools and that is why we started looking at functional dependencies, the definition of functional dependencies and all that we and then how to you uh, how to uh, derive new functional dependencies all that we have looked at. And the idea behind normal forms is basically that they give us uh, in terms of these functional dependencies they we can express certain constraints and if the schema satisfies those constraints then certain kind of problems are not present with that schema ok. So, that is the area. So, we will progressively look at you uh, know more and more restrictive normal forms ok. And as we look at normal forms we will see what kind of problems it avoids in the each of these normal forms and then see that what problems for you know persist and how do we handle them. So, that is how we will uh, present this uh, normal forms ok. So, <coughs> in general there is a uh, we will assume that there is a uh, scheme there is a relation scheme and a set of functional dependencies all all functional dependencies on that particular scheme are known and that is there in the background. So, we will represent that as f ok. Now, to in order to define second normal form remember the first normal form is nothing but the assumption that all the values in all the cells of the uh, table are atomic pieces of data right. So, that is built into the definition of relational databases itself. So, that is why we do not discuss the first normal form all relations are in first normal form by definition. Now, in order to define second normal form we need what is called full functional dependency. So, if there is an f d x determines a for which there is no proper subset y of that x such that y itself determines a. Then we call this as a full functional dependency 
okay. Otherwise, we will say that A is you know if this is not the case and there exists a Y such that Y determines A, then we say that A is partially dependent on X and because X A is actually dependent only on Y which is a proper subset of X. So, so we define partial dependency or full for so appropriately. So, this is set A is said to be func fully functionally dependent on X, fully functionally dependent on X. Now, it is the normal form definition uh, says like this, goes like this. So, a relation scheme R with respect to a set of functional dependencies is said to be in the second normal form, in second normal form, if every non prime attribute is fully functionally dependent on any key of R, any key of R. This is important. Now, what is non prime? that is defined here. An, an attribute that is part of some key, a relation may have several keys, right? all of them are called candidate keys. right? So, a, a, an attribute that is part of some key is called a prime attribute and an attribute which is not part of any of these, any of the keys is called a non prime attribute. So, for some technical reason for right now, we will give some concession for prime attributes and then impose a condition on non prime attributes saying that every non prime attribute is fully functionally dependent on any key of R. Okay. So, this is this is when you call a relation to be in second normal form. Okay. Now, let us look at uh, some examples and then see uh, if the second normal form is actually violated what kind of data redundancy exists and how do we uh, uh, get rid of that. Um, this is a, this may, uh, I am giving you some examples so that you know there is continuity between what we are discussing. So, let us, let us look at uh, this uh, example. Um, uh, I have uh, put in attributes which are different from your uh, uh, the usual student uh, relation that you had earlier just for example sake for illustrating points here. So, roll number name department sex, hostel name room number and admit year let us say these are the attributes in some uh, relation called student and these are the assumptions th which will uh, dictate the functional dependencies that are present. So, each student is allotted a single occupancy room. Okay. And each room is identified by values of these attributes hostel name and room number. And boys and girls are accommodated in separate hostels, these are the assumptions. So, with that we will actually get two keys for this, row number is a key, row number is a key, no two uh, rows in this particular uh, table will have the same row number. Hostel name room number also is a key that is because we uh, each student is allotted a single occupancy room. And because of this policy that boys and girls are accommodated in separate hostels, there is an FD called hostel name determines sex that we have also seen earlier. Right. So, given the hostel name we can uniquely identify whether it is a boy or a girl. <coughs> now, this functional dependency actually is uh, such that this sex attribute does not fully functionally dependent on the key. The key is hostel name room number. So, in on this key you can see that there is a uh, only part of that key determines this attribute. So, this relation is not in second number form and in general if we see some num, uh, if you see some you know relation and it is not in a particular normal form, one technique that we will use is to break that relation, we call it decomposition, we decompose that relation and then bring in two relations into the picture two or more in fact. 
So, in this case since this attribute sex is causing trouble for us, we will actually isolate that, we will isolate that. So, we will bring in st uh, new relation. So, okay, called hostel detail where we put this hostel name sex. Okay. Now, this particular FD is now confined into this particular relation hostel name determines sex and hostel name is obviously key for that. And so, this FD is now a a normal FD, I mean, there is no troublesome FD, it is not a partial dependency or anything like that. The key here is hostel name. Now, for the here both keys are there hostel name room number and roll number are keys, but then there are no uh, functional dependencies you know which are uh, which are causing problems for us. There is no, 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 uh, no non prime attribute. What are the prime attributes here? Roll number hostel name, room number, these are all prime attributes. The non prime attributes are name, department and admit here. So, name is fully functionally dependent on both roll number as well as hostel name, room number and so is the case with department and admit here. Okay. So, this now this relation is actually in second normal form. This relation is not in second normal form and we have done a decomposition. Uh, and then ensured that the troublemaking functional dependency is actually in a new relation. And with that we have been able to get two uh, relations that have the same information, um, but uh, and both of them are in uh, second hour form. Okay. <coughs> now, So, what exactly uh, actually there is only a small amount of redundancy of data here that we just had one uh, you know probably one byte of information extra you know, but that that is not this uh, uh, you know uh, uh, we do not need to bother about uh, how much uh, and all, but the theory tells us that there is redundancy because you are going to uh, you know keep this uh, gender information uh, with all the um, students even though it is actually can be figured out from the hospital. But in general it can be a uh, lot more information, but uh, 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 so, so this is only an, uh, an example. So, that kind of redundancy is what is being detected by this second normal form in a relation and we are now saying that uh, we can avoid that redundancy by uh, decomposing this relation into two relations. To give you another example, look at this, um, we have information about books, uh, author name, title, author affiliation, author affiliation is an institution to which uh, the author uh, is uh, currently associated with. Then this is a ISBN is a international standard uh, book number right. So, so this is a uh, another attribute of books and it is a key actually and then publisher and publishing year. Okay. So, we have made some simplifying assumptions here that the book has exactly one author, one author and author can actually be uniquely identified by the value of the author name and we could actually replace it by some author number or something like that if you want. But let us make a simplifying assumption saying that the author name uh, can uniquely identify a person. Okay. An author is associated with exactly one organization at any point of time. So, under these assumptions uh, what are the keys for this? What are the keys for this relation? Obviously, ISBN is a ISBN is a key. ISBN is a book identification number. So that's a key. What else is a key? 
what else is a key? Is the author name a key? Is author name a key for this uh, relation? A person you know a person might write multiple uh, books and so uh, author name together with the title will be one of the keys actually. So, now you can see exactly where the uh, trouble uh, comes. So, author name title is one key ISBN is one of the key. So, this author affiliation is an attribute that is dependent only on author it does not matter how many books you might write with right he it is affiliation is dependent on the author. And so, this is the attribute that is not fully functionally dependent on the first key. And so, again uh, there is a violation of second normal form uh, here and what we say is that we decompose and then get rid of uh, uh, this author affiliation and put it in a new relation. Again uh, author name title together and the ISBN or keys here and then this non prime attributes publisher and publisher year uh, are fully functionally dependent on all keys in in this relation and this one is the this is the only non key and then that is also functionally. So, actually with the, the question of violating second normal form does not even come into the picture if you do not have a key that has multiple attributes right. Unless a key has multiple attributes, there is no scope for this kind of a partial dependency. So, the first thing you have to check is whether if you are checking for second normal form, are there any keys that have multiple attributes? If there is no key with a multiple attributes, then there is no scope for violating second normal form at all, anyway. Okay, so, this is what um, and, uh, and this also kind of you know for all the books uh, that a particular person writes we were keeping the author affiliation uh, you know data in unnecessarily. And so, now that has been actually shifted to another um, relation and so that redundancy of data has been avoided here. So, if, if, if a relation scheme violates a normal form usually there will be redundancy. So, in this case there is redundancy because that author affiliation is stored multiple times. If a uh, pers particular person writes some 10 books then he, his affiliation will be 10, 10 times or something like that. Okay. So, let us move on. So, in order to talk about further norm, uh, dependent for the normal forms. Uh, we would like to introduce uh, these dependencies called transitive dependencies. Do not confuse this with transitive you know inference rule uh, that is different. Here we call some f d x determines y in a relation scheme. Uh, a transitive kind of dependency if there exists some set of attributes z such that z is not a subset of any key of r is a little uh, technical uh, condition imposed on z that z is not a subset of any key of r ok. So, all z attributes are non prime attributes. Okay, Z uh, it may contain some uh, prime attribute, but it is not part of any key fully it is not a subset of a key that is how we are concerned about. Such and what happens is we, we get this x determines Z and Z determines Y exist in the scheme. So, in the scheme x determines Z, Z determines Y exist and so naturally x determines Y also exist ok. But then that z is something which is not a subset of any key of r. If, if this kind of three uh, dependencies functional dependencies exist in the relation we call that as a, a transitive 
dependency. So, here is an example where again I slightly change the example. Uh, I think I now brought in department and head of the department into the picture. So, student, uh, student department, we will call it student department, roll number, name, department, hostel name, room number, head of the department. So, uh, the keys are roll number and hostel name, room number, and the same assumptions hold good, and uh, each student belongs to exactly one department, and so roll number determines department each uh, department has exactly one HOD. So, department determines uh, head of the department. And so, here is an instance of transitive dependency, roll number determines department, department determines head of the department and, and so, roll number determines head of the department. Okay. Now, this is this relation in the second normal form first. And uh, okay, so let us uh, come to that question a little later. So, ri right now, where is the redundancy? Where is the redundancy? You can see the redundancy here, right. Uh, since roll number, name, department, host name, room number, that much is actually okay. But now you are storing head of the department along with every student. So, if there are 100 students in computer science department, that is all. 500 students in computer science department with all of them you are also storing the information about head of the department and that is where redundancy exists. But can this redundancy be detected using second normal form? Are there any or is, is this uh, is this relation violating second normal form? Is this uh, scheme violating second normal form? So, especially if you look at this head of the department, it is dependent on department, but you know department is not a key or not part of a, any key or anything like that. So, there is no question of partial uh, you know uh, uh, no violation of two, two enough restriction okay. which, which basically said that no non prime you know attribute should be. All, all nine non prime attributes should be fully functionally dependent on all keys that is what second normal form says. So, here non prime attributes are name, department and head of the department, they are all you know fully functionally dependent on the keys. So, even though the relation is in second normal form, so there is a redundancy and uh, that redundancy can only be detected be, uh, because of you know uh, uh, yeah. If, if we detect presence of this transitive dependencies and then make a rule about them. So, redundancy still exists even on the relation is in second number form. So, to, to kind of plug this what we do is now define third number form. So, relation scheme R is in third normal form, if it is in second normal form and in addition no non prime attribute of R is transitively dependent on any key of R. This is the new constraint that we impose. In addition to second normal form constraint, we now say that uh, no non prime attribute should be transitively dependent on any of the keys of in the previous example, we had head of the department is transitively dependent on the key roll number. So, and that is why it is causing uh, problems for us. So, this is not in third number form because head of the department um, is dependent on de uh, department, department is dependent on roll number. So, it, and roll number is a key. So, Roll number determines department, department determines set of the department, that is the transitive dependency and, and so it is violating the second number form, the third number form sorry. So, again the, the remedy is similar, the remedy is that 
take out the department under head of the department uh, and then put it in a separate uh, relation. So, department info is a new relation that we create put department and head of the department, head of the department information there and the rest of the information will be here. Now, you can see that both of them. Uh, so, the troublemaking transitive dependency has been uh, removed from each of these. So, this we will independently look at dependencies functional dependencies in in this relation student relation and department information relation and uh, there is no uh, transitive dependency now and so both of them are in turn number four. And that redundancy that was existing in the original relation uh, is now removed and so uh, we have a better design. So, in general uh, the, these normal forms give us some kind of guidelines. So, that when when we have a relational design and we have the functional dependencies we can evaluate where are there any issues with our relational uh, schemes and if so uh, we can uh, improve the design and then uh, replace certain uh, relations by decomposed relations. But this is not this is not a very you know uh, hard and fast rule also actually sometimes depending on the kind of you know performance uh, considerations we may like to keep certain attributes like for example, the gender attribute in the student it logically belongs to the student relation even though a little bit of redundancy uh, exists. So, we might for performance reasons we might decide not to uh, decompose. Uh, so, so this you take these things as as guidelines, but by and large we will try to uh, 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 normal uh, uh, go for uh, you know the strictest normal form that is possible, uh, which is actually uh, so there is there is one more normal form that is stricter than uh, 3 enough that is called boy squad uh, normal form. So, we will try to go up to boy squad normal form. So, here is a ok. Now, before we uh, proceed further here is an alternate definition for uh, third normal form. Uh, the alternate definition is like this the relation scheme R is in third normal form if for any non trivial functional dependency x determines a x determines a either x is a super key or a is prime. Okay. This is a very uh, nice uh, you know uh, definition and it is somewhat easier to remember also. Now, remember I mean, look at this definition it does not even talk about 2 in a. So, it combines everything into one uh, nice compact uh, definition. What it says is that all that you have to do is to uh, remember this notation about uh, this uh, letters uh, x determines a that means x is a set and a is a single attribute. So, so, for every non trivial function dependency of this kind which has left hand side a set of attributes and the right hand side a single attribute either x should is a super key or a is prime. Uh, so recall the definition of super key what is a super key a super key is something which contains a, a key. Now, let us look at this a little bit careful. Suppose some R violates this definition, some scheme violates this definition. That means, there is an FD x determines A for which both 1 and 2 are false, right. 1 is x is a super key, 2 is A is prime. If one of them is true, then this is this is true, right. If both of them are false, then it is violating the definition. 
So, suppose R violates this definition, then there is an FD x determines A for which both 1 and 2 are false. So, that means x is not a super key and A is a non prime attribute, A is a non prime attribute. Now, if you notice, uh, if you look observe this situation carefully, then two cases might arise actually that if you focus on x the left hand side of this uh, function dependency, either x is contained in a key, x is contained in a key or x is not contained in a key, these are disjoint cases. Right. So, let us look at each of these cases, suppose x is contained in a key, x is contained in a key, then it is a clearly so, there is a key k and x is contained inside that and x determines a. So, what does that mean? There is a partial dependency. So, a is dependent on x which is part of a key. So, a is not fully functionally dependent on that particular key. So, this violates the 2 enough condition. Okay. So, obviously, uh, this cannot be the relation cannot be in P enough also because it violates the 2 enough itself. So, supposing x is not contained in a key, supposing the other case that x is not contained in a key, then you consider some key k for this relation, obviously, k determines x because if the k determines every subset of attributes, k is a key. So, k determines x and x determines a okay. and x is not contained in a key. In, in the transitive dependency, we exactly put this particular constraint there saying that x should not be part of a key. So, this is a example of a transitive dependency you know k determines x, x determines a. So, this is a case of transitive dependency. And k can be any key here because every key determines x and x determines a is given to us. And so, uh, so it basically this definition in some sense captures the uh, essence of uh, 3NF and it is easier uh, to remember and also uh, the advantage uh, with this definition is that. Uh, when you go to a stricter normal form, the BCNF normal form, all that we will be actually doing is to simply drop this concession that we are giving for prime attributes. We will simply remove this, that will give the Boyce chord normal form. Boyce chord normal form is uh, a, a relation scheme R is said to be in Boyce chord normal form if for every non trivial functional dependency x determines A, x is a super key. So, now we will look at the uh, Boyce chord normal form, why do we need that? Here is a motivating example for that, let us again uh, this example has been you know created to illustrate the point. So, here is we are I am making a very important assumption here that student name, student names are unique. In this example alone we are making that assumption, no two students have the same name, an important assumption we are making here. Okay. So, roll number, student name, course, grade. Okay. What are the keys? So, th this one, uh, this relation is obviously for keeping the grade information. So, student whose roll number is this, whose name is this, has done some course and got some grade. That is the information in this each of the row. So, now the keys are Obviously, the students does uh, each student does several courses. So, uh, so the keys are roll number and course ID, or course I mean, and student name and course ID. These two are the possible keys for this relation. So, keys are roll number, course, student name, and course. And so, because these are keys, all attributes are prime except grade. Grade is the only non prime attribute. 
So, if you uh, and look at the functional dependencies, roll number course determines grade, student name course determines grade, roll number determines student name, student name determines roll number. Okay. Now, apply the third number form condition for uh, third number form definition for each of these functional dependencies, everybody qualifies uh, the condition. The what is what is the third number form uh, condition says? that for every non trivial functional dependency all of them are non trivial function x determines a either x is a super key which is the case in this case first one is a super key which is a key itself is a key this also is a sup, uh, itself is a key and so either x is a super key or a is prime right the right hand side is prime. Now, this is not a super key this is not even uh, does not contain a key, but then the right hand side is a prime multiple, right. So, both for both of these things that concession we gave for prime attributes will cover them. So, all the functional dependencies actually satisfy the third normal form condition, but it is obvious that there is redundancy in this table, it is obvious that there is redundancy because we are storing name of the student or whatever it is one of them is redundant either you should have roll number or you should have name you should not need not have both and we are not able to catch it using the third number form mainly because we have uh, given some concession from prime attributes. So, student name is stored redundantly along with every course being done by the student. So, this kind these kind of examples where you know such kind of things happen uh, that there are attributes of this kind we have a new normal form called the boys chord normal form the boys chord normal form what it says is that the definition is this we just drop the r in the third normal form relation scheme r is in boys chord normal form if for every non trivial functional dependency x determines k x is a super key of r so now all those three uh, the f d is 3 and 4 uh, do violate this rule and so we decompose the relation and then get grade info roll number course grade and student info roll number student name in this both of them are keys if the roll number is a key student name also is a key because of assumptions okay so now this is in third number form this is in also in third so, boys chord normal form um, further removes redundancies and so uh, we normally try and go up to boys chord normal form, but one of the questions that you that might crop up uh, right now is that why are you boring us with all these definitions if boys chord normal form is what you actually want why do not it simply define that boys chord normal form right in the beginning and then be done with the class <laughs> right. This is the strictest normal form is what you said and we should look for this boys chord normal form why do not you first define that and then be done with that. Obviously, second normal form is not good because it is allowing redundancy third normal form is also not good it is be allowing some more redund some little redundancy boys chord number form is not allowing any redundancy so it's good so we should have that <laughs> right so actually there is a reason for why uh, we have to still study third number form definitely uh, uh, we will not stop at second number form so uh, so depending on the actual situation in the design we either go up to third number form and stop there or go all the way up to boys chord number form and there are some 
technical reasons why uh, we may not be able to go to Boyce Conover form in all situations. So, that is the reason why we still study uh, the Tor number form. So, that I will do in the next class. Okay. So, in the next uh, couple of lectures, we will introduce certain uh, important properties of these, you know, uh, we, we have been solving the problems that we arrive that arise in these relation schemes by, by doing some decompositions. So, what are some properties of these decompositions that we will look at and then actually from those principles, it becomes clear to us that turnover form is still required. Okay.